Welcome home to Radiant Life Church, where everyone counts. We're so glad you're joining us today for our online service. This week, we're launching a series of messages called Fundamentals. It's a focus on what we believe about God, humanity, the church, and eternity. Yes, and today I want to share with you from 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 15 and 16. It says, Be diligent in these matters. Give yourself wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress. Watch your life and doctrine closely. Persevere in them, because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. You know, it's not often that we talk about doctrine or you throw out that word, but it is so important for us as believers to really understand what it is we believe and why, and to also be able to communicate it well with others. Absolutely. The fundamental truths are our doctrine or tenets of faith, and they're really the basics of what we believe. And, and, and you know, I, I think in sports, the greatest athletes uh, don't just learn the trick plays and the really complicated maneuvers, but they really matter master the fundamentals. And that's so important for us as followers of Jesus Christ. If we want to have victory in life, we have to master the fundamentals. And that way we grow closer to God and we shine his light in this world. Yes, absolutely. Well, let's take a moment and just pray together, shall we? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love and for your goodness that you have shown to us. God, we thank you for the gift of your word that you have provided to us so that we can grow in relationship with you, God, and walk forward in victory. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that just as you inspired the writing of the Bible, you would inspire us to live a life that glorifies and honors you at all times. Yes, and Lord, I just pray for our church family today. I lift them up to you, Lord, and just pray that you would keep everyone healthy. God, I pray that your Holy Spirit would just be poured out in their lives, God. If they find themselves struggling right now, I pray, Lord, that they would turn their eyes to you, that they would find you be the lifter of their heads for those who are suffering and hurting, God. I just pray that you would be their peace and their encouragement today. And Lord, I just pray that you would just continue to knit our hearts together in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, let's take a few minutes and just worship together. When darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken No, I won't be shaken my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Now shame no longer has place to hide and I am not a captive to the lies and I'm not afraid to leave my past behind oh I won't be shaken no oh, I won't be shaken cause my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand Stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Now there's power that can break off every chain. There's power. Doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love, my fear. 
doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My feet doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Cause my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. I'm standing on Have you ever wondered how our Bible with 66 books and penned by approximately 40 different people from diverse backgrounds over a period of around 1,500 years became accepted as the authoritative Word of God? We call the 39 books of the Old Testament and 27 books of the New Testament the canon of Scripture. There has been much debate about the process of canonizing the books of the Bible, but we support a position that the same Holy Spirit who inspired the writing of these books guided men and women of God to identify and preserve them. The Old Testament canon was established by 250 AD, with the vast majority of Hebrew believers accepting the divine inspiration of 39 books which have been widely studied, taught, and circulated for centuries. In the first decades after the resurrection, early church leaders began compiling, circulating, and teaching from the 27 books that now comprise the New Testament canon, which was affirmed by 393 AD after more than three centuries of prayerful scrutiny. As followers of Jesus Christ, we affirm the fundamental truth that the scriptures, both Old and New Testaments, are verbally inspired of God and are the revelation of God to man, the infallible, authoritative rule of faith and conduct. Some have suggested that certain portions of Scripture are flawed or in contradiction with other passages. Others argue that accepting inspiration is the equivalent of shutting off the brain that God gave us. However, the truth of the Bible has never been disproven by archaeology, chemistry, physics, medicine, or any other scientific discipline. Much to the contrary, the accuracy of biblical accounts has withstood scrutiny for thousands of years, and many of the bedrock principles of science were established by men and women of faith. At some point, we must take God at His word and accept the uncompromising truth of His word. Don't take my word for it. Take God's word for it. Let's begin in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 through 17, where we read, But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Would you bow your head with me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for speaking to us through your word. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that as we dive into your word today, you would illuminate the truth that you have given for our benefit and that you would help us to shine your light more brightly in this dark world so that many would come to faith in Jesus Christ and experience the gift of eternal life. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it is fundamental to our faith to accept that the Bible is inspired by God. The word inspire literally means to influence, move, or guide by divine or supernatural inspiration or to inhale. It is often said that the divinely inspired word of God is the Almighty's love letter to us or his instruction manual for our lives. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. 
Since God is our creator, it makes sense that the Bible, which he inspired, would be useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. The Lord could have handed Adam and Eve a complete user guide at the beginning. But throughout the centuries, God has consistently worked through the men and women that he created to communicate his will. The Bible was penned by men and women chosen by God from amongst prophets, priests, kings, fishermen, tax collectors, tent makers, shepherds, and even a physician. God works through real people because he created humanity in his likeness to be in relationship with him. In 1 Corinthians 2.13, we read, And we also thank God continually. Because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as a human word, but as it actually is the word of God, which is indeed at work in you who believe. In case you haven't noticed, the messages that I preach are loaded with biblical content. This isn't an accident. I'm an imperfect person called by our perfect savior to share the good news. While I may foul up in my delivery and communication, the Word of God never fails to deliver the truth that we need. So when I preach and teach, I invite the same Holy Spirit who inspired the writing of the Bible to guide my teaching of it. I consistently pray that I will get out of the way as God has His way in our church. Similarly, those who penned the Bible did not create the text. They simply recorded what God communicated through them for our benefit. In 2 Peter 1, 20 and 21, we read, Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation of things. For prophecy never had its origin in the human will, but prophets, though human, spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. It takes faith to accept that the Bible is inspired by God. But this isn't a, such a great leap of faith when you have a relationship with God because knowing God means knowing that he doesn't make mistakes. He's infallible. And that means that through his inspiration, the Bible is infallible. In fact, we go so far as to say that the Bible is infallible in its entirety. Uh, both 2 Samuel 22:31 and Psalm 18:30 record the lyrics of David, who praised the Lord for delivering him from his enemies. David was called a man after God's own heart, and the Holy Spirit inspired David to write, "As for God, his way is perfect. The Lord's word is flawless. He shields all who take refuge in him. God's way is perfect." His word is flawless. That's pretty clear, isn't it? <laughs> the prophet Balaam was summoned by Balak, son of Zippor, king of Moab, who sought a blessing for his people and a curse against the people of God. But Balaam would not be bought. He would speak only what the Lord commanded. The Bible is infallible because God is infallible. In Numbers 23, 19 and 20, we read, God is not human that he should lie, not a human being that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? I have received a command to bless. He has blessed and I cannot change it. The Bible is more than a collection of stories. Biblical authors were so certain of divine inspiration and infallibility that they staked their lives on it, literally. Many of the Old and New Testament authors faced imprisonment, torture, and execution rather than recant the truth of God's word. The Bible is infallible because God is infallible. One of the early Christian martyrs, Peter, was inspired by the Holy Spirit to write to us about this in 2 Peter 1, 16 through 18, where we read, For we did not follow cleverly devised stories when we told you about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in power, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. He received honor and glory from God the Father when the voice came to him from the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. 
We ourselves heard this voice that came from heaven when we were with him on the sacred mountain. How does anyone who has heard the voice of God come to fear the threats of man? Peter denied Jesus on the night he was betrayed, but Peter would be crucified upside down rather than deny him after the resurrection. Peter's testimony provides convincing evidence that the Bible is infallible because God is infallible. And after thousands of years, the Bible is relevant for our lives today. 2 Timothy 3.17 tells us how the Bible improves our daily lives so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. The Bible is relevant to equip us for every good work, and understanding the Bible exposes truth in this world and beyond. 2 Peter 1.19 tells us, we also have the prophetic message as something completely reliable, and you will do well to pay attention to it as to a light shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Studying the Bible draws us closer to God, strengthens our faith, and broadens our understanding because the Bible is relevant. And when we apply biblical principles to our daily lives, the Lord produces good results in our lives and in the lives of those around us. Jesus encourages us to apply the truth of the Bible in Luke 8:15, where we read, But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering produce a crop. Make no mistake, the Bible is relevant. Those who have put their faith in Jesus and apply biblical truth to their lives and relationships experience life to the fullest. But don't take my word for it. Take God's word for it. Deuteronomy 4.2 says, Do not add to what I command you and do not subtract from it, but keep the commands of the Lord your God that I give you. I want to encourage you to spend time in the Bible each day. Even if you only read a verse or two, time in God's word is always time well spent because God often inspires us through his word. Over the past few years, Pastor Anianzi, our kids, and I have read through the Bible numerous times, sometimes on our own reading plans and sometimes sharing the same reading plan. I've studied the Bible most of my life, and I'm still learning, growing, and benefiting from the truth of God's Word. We accept the fundamental truth that the Scriptures, both Old and New Testaments, are verbally inspired of God and are the revelation of God to man, the infallible, authoritative rule of faith and conduct. We don't just pick and choose which passages we prefer, but seek to glean as much truth from the Bible as we can. So the first on our list of fundamentals is the scriptures inspired. This means the Bible is inspired by God. The Bible is infallible in its entirety, and the Bible is relevant today. If you struggle to accept this fundamental truth, perhaps it's time to get to know the God of the Bible more personally by choosing to follow Jesus Christ. I like to say that choosing to follow Jesus is as easy as A, B, C. The letter A stands for admit that you've sinned and ask God to forgive your sin. The letter B stands for believe that Jesus already paid the price for your sin when he died on the cross. And the letter C stands for choose. And that's exactly what I'd like to invite you to do right now, to choose for yourself to follow Jesus. If you're ready to make that choice, then I'd simply ask that you bow your head, close your eyes, and repeat this prayer after me. You can make it your own if you mean it. Dear Jesus, I know that you are good, and I want you to be the Lord of my life. So I admit that I have sinned, and I ask you to forgive my sin because I believe that you paid the price for my sin when you died on the cross. And I believe that you conquered death when you rose from the grave. 
And so I choose to follow you today and tomorrow and each day throughout my life's journey. Thank you, Jesus, for coming into my life, for taking away my sin, and for making me a new creation. In Jesus' name, amen. If you just prayed with me, please send an email to prayer at rlclodi.com. At Radiant Life Church, our mission is to share life's journey through growing relationship with Jesus Christ. And you can be sure that the best is yet to come. May the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You unravel me with a melody And you surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies until all my fears are gone cause I'm no longer a slave to fear oh I am a child of God I'm no longer Fears were drowned in perfect love. You rescued me so I could stand and sing. Oh, I am a child of God. Cause I'm no longer a slave to fear. Oh, I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear Oh, I am a child of God Oh, I Soften my heart To break me apart I need you To open my eyes To see that you're shaping my life So all I am
I'm standing 